back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kurt. Today's poem is by A.E. Stallings. She is a contemporary poet and translator. She was born in Georgia, but lives in Greece currently. She was named a 2011 MacArthur Fellow, and her poetry is known for its use of traditional forms. Most of her poetry is rhymed and metered, and she makes extensive use of some of the the, uh, the essential classic poetic forms such as villanelles and sonnets, to name just a few. The poem that I'm going to read today is from her critically acclaimed new collection called Like, which came out in 2018. And the poem I'm going to read today is called Cast Irony, or Cast Irony, if you prefer. <laughs> Who scrubbed this iron skillet and water with surfactant soap meant to cleanse, not kill it. But since its black and lustrous skin despoiled of its enrobing oils dulled, let's water in, now it's vulnerable and porous, as a hero stripped of his arms before a scornful chorus. It lacks internal consistency, as ancient oral epics, where a Bronze Age warrior might appeal to a boar's tusk helmet wearing foe, who has an anachronistic heart of steel, will of iron from which metals no one has yet forged a weapon, much less pans or kettles. Though there must have been between two eras awkward overlap enacted in the kitchen when mother-in-law and daughter wrangled over the newfangled, over oil and water in proverbial mistrust, brazen youth subject to Iron Age as iron is to rust. There can be no reasoning with sarcastic oxygen. Only a re-seasoning can give the vessel's life new lease. Scour off the scab, the color of dried blood, apply some elbow grease to make it fast. Anoint it. Put it once more in the fire, where everything is cast. I love this poem particularly for its many turns, its many reversals, its many double meanings. Much of the poetry in in this collection, in Like, by Stallings, is imbued with a very real what I feel is a sense of humor. Uh, she she deals at length with the quotidian, with uh, matters of motherhood, of parenting, of marriage, of making a home. But she does that through ancient images and ancient metaphors, through mythology and through the greatest works of ancient literature, which she deals with regularly in her uh, translation work. But you see that sense of humor come out in, in this This stanza, this stanza, there can be no reasoning with sarcastic oxygen, only a (laughs) re-seasoning. I love that. And then, of course, that jams into the next stanza. Can give the vessel's life new lease. And then you see it at the end, anointed, put it once more in the fire where everything is cast. And of course, there's a really lovely double meaning there. Uh, Everything is cast as in, everything is cast into the fire, but also it is in the fire that... The iron is cast into the tool, into the thing that is usable, into the thing that becomes the essential part of, of, our, of our lives, of food preparation, of, of not just food that sustains, but food that, that we take joy in. Um, the cast iron skillet, for anybody who spends a lot of time cooking or has ever used one, they, be, they become quite a point of pride. Um, the care for them is, is something that people who own cast iron skillets take seriously. And for people who don't own cast iron skillets, they probably get in, uh, get in arguments about how you're best supposed to clean them. I've been in many of these arguments myself as someone who has a small collection of cast iron and who takes their care pretty seriously. And when I first read this poem, it struck me that the care that goes into caring for a cast iron skillet has to be something like the care that goes into producing a poem. The, the care of a cast iron skillet has been discovered and passed on for centuries and generations, just as poetic forms have, there's a way to preserve a cast iron skillet. And I think that in some ways what Stallings is doing in her poetry is attempting to preserve forms that are uh, slipping away, or maybe not slipping away, but perhaps less valued, uh, less used than they once were. And ultimately, this is a poem about how best to preserve the thing itself, right? How do you preserve the cast iron skillet? How can you give it new life or give its life new lease? How can you protect it? A cast iron skillet, of course, is a very powerful tool. It's, it's strong, it's durable. It can deal with extremely high heat, a variety of kinds of foods. It conducts heat very well. And that makes it an extremely dynamic and flexible uh, resource in the kitchen. I love the image of 
the soldier who doesn't have his arms. He's stripped of his arms before a scornful chorus. I could talk about this poem for a long time and, and just barely scratch the surface. There's so much going on here. So I hope you'll go uh, pick up A.E. Stallings' collection, Like, which came out last year. It's great. I'll read this one more time before we go. Who scrubbed this iron skillet in water with surfactant soap meant to cleanse, not kill it? But since its black and lustrous skin, despoiled of its enrobing oils, dulled, lets water in, now it's vulnerable and porous, as a hero stripped of his arms before a scornful chorus. It lacks internal consistency as ancient oral epics, where a Bronze Age warrior might appeal to a boar's tusk helmet wearing foe who has an anachronistic heart of steel. Will of iron from which metals no one has yet forged a weapon, much less pans or kettles. Though there must have been, between two eras, awkward overlap enacted in the kitchen. When mother-in-law and daughter wrangled over the newfangled, over oil and water, in proverbial mistrust, brazen youth subject to iron age as iron is to rust. There can be no reasoning with sarcastic oxygen, only a re-seasoning can give the vessel's life new lease. Scour off the scab the color of dried blood. Apply some elbow grease to make it fast. Anoint it. Put it once more in the fire where everything is cast. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another one.